Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. Hello and welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Our show is brought to you in part of the delicious Bluegrass Restaurant in Highland Park where the food is amazing with great service. And I also want to thank my fantastic director, Larry Beyer, and our amazing crew, Ron. Julian and Irv, and I want to thank everybody that volunteers on this program, that they are very, very special people. And I want to welcome back a most informative guest, somebody that I can count on, that can tell you everything that's going on in the Bible and how it relates, especially right now with anti-Semitism, which, which is on the rise, and we had talked about it many times and I know that you just recently wrote a book where Jesus walked which is uh, you said he, he's also in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament and that is a wonderful book that you you uh, it's an electronic book which will f eventually come out in hard copy and uh, it was a beautiful done book with so many beautiful pages and colors and actual people in the book, with, uh, which is really good because then you could really understand the Bible a little bit more because it can get really confusing for people that aren't, that are a little bit more novices. And um, I want to welcome back the Reverend and the Rabbi, Roy Schwartz. Welcome back, Rabbi. Thank you. And sir. Reverend. Good to be back with you. Thank you. And we, we talked about um, uh, anti-Semitism, and you know it's on the rise. You hear it, you know, it's going on, you know, in, in fact, it, it was during the Hanukkah festival uh, in the rabbi's, it was more, I think it was his apartment, his home. Yeah, and, just outside of New York City. Uh, yes, and that's where you come from. You're, that's your original hometown. And uh, and also, even in the churches, uh, there was, a you know, another incident where people got shot in the church. And what's going on? What, what's happening to our, you know, people, you know, you always thought about religion. It's, it's something that's very sacred. And people are getting murdered in their own synagogues, they're in their churches. And that is why we're doing this program today, because in the Bible, this is your, one of your books, this is not the Bible, but this is out of the Bible. What is going on? And you said that it can be traced way back to what happened many, many years ago. So, what, what is, first of all, why is it happening now? Well, we're living in a time where uh, uh, Israel is being regathered back into the land, and the forces of uh, evil are opposed to God's program. Uh, we have the creator of the world, God, and he set apart a people for his name. They are his firstborn among the nations, and and uh, ever since he has chosen them to be his people, the God of this world, who is opposed to the, to the God of heaven and earth, is uh, doing all that he can to undo God's kingdom. And Israel is an integral part in God's redemptive program for the world, for the, for the redemption of the world. We talked about a little earlier at the Bluegrass, we were talking about Israel, anti-Semitism, and the people say, well, Israel, we're not talking, Israel has nothing to do with, I mean, the Jewish people are, have nothing to do with, we're, we're angry at Israel. We're not angry at the Jewish people. But you said, is that the same or is that one or is that different to be, is Israel and Jewish Judaism a part of a one, that they, one, rather than separate? Well, they were inextricably linked Israel is the Jewish homeland. It's the only land that Israel has been 
given or has attained where they are welcome, where, they, where it is their homeland, where they're not temporary, not residents, uh, not outsiders. Every other land that they've been in, they've been uh, removed or persecuted or eliminated. Uh, but uh, now in these last days, uh, Israel is now a nation and the nations are upset that God has once again uh, taken up and planted Israel in the nation. And uh, then they will not be removed again, though the nations will try and attempt to remove them. Yeah, because, you know, when we talk about, we think about it, we're talking, you know, the Arab nations and the Palestinians, we're actually one P in way, we're both children of Abraham. Yes. And why was it so, you know, why can't, Everybody, since we're all cousins of each other, and it's interesting, we talked about anti-Semitism, where Arabs and the Semitic, it's the Semitic nations. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you think of anti-Semitism, are anti-Arab, anti-Palestinian, anti, -Arab, anti why is it called Semitism? Because it's, they're a Semitic nation, like we it are. Is, it is a misnomer, because the, the Arab people are Semites, descended from Shem. Uh, the, the problem is, is that God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob rather than Abraham, Ishmael, and Esau. Uh, so when he made those choices, uh, those that were not chosen uh, opposed God's sovereign choice, God's election. As far as God was concerned, uh, Isaac was the, was the son of promise, and Jacob was the son of promise. And so ever since that time, the, their brothers or cousins have been uh, at war with them, seeking to get the birthright, seeking to be chosen, seeking to be the ones that would receive the promises. And uh, wherever there is a, a, an election or a choice, there's always opposition to the sovereign choices of God. Man has always been at war with God. You know, it, it's interesting because we're, we, we also talked about the... the, the uh, the, the boycott movement, boycott, divestment, and sanction, which is called BDS. And it's interesting because most people that are for this movement don't realize that the many Palestinians and Israeli and Israeli Arabs work for companies in Israel uh, you know, that, that employ and provide for these families, uh, their families, uh, jobs. And when you kill off a, you know, a, um, an Israeli company, you're also killing off the, the, the support of these people that depend on these jobs to eat and, you know, supply, you know, and support their families. And no one's talking about that. They don't realize when you boycott Israel companies, you're boycotting employment for Palestinians, boycotting employment for Israeli Arabs, because they employ many of these people. That's very true. And wh why has, do you have any idea why well, no again, one knows majority, anything about this? The majority of the, uh, the Arab people, the Palestinian people that, that live in these areas are really for Israel in many ways. They, they have a better system of government. They have uh, thrived under Israeli government. Uh, but, but those that are against, politically against the state of Israel are undermining those that would like to live in peace with Israelis. And so the, the minority are affecting the majority of the Palestinian people. Well, see, the BDS movement is very strong in the United States, especially in colleges. Mm -hmm. And I don't, if they need to, I, I think they need to have some Palestinian representatives that come out to these colleges because if it's an Israeli, they get boycotted and they get, uh, you know, and then they get, uh, they, nobody listens to what they're saying and people walk out in the, on these classrooms that are, you know, that having guest speakers that are supporting Israel. So I think that they need Arab speakers and Palestinian speakers to talk to these young children, the, not children anymore, but these young people in colleges that, hey, you need to stop that. These companies are helping us out. Well, when they do that, they, they, would, they open themselves up to intimidation back home to their families and to their neighbors 
when they step up for Israel. A, a Palestinian who is pro-Israeli ex experiences extreme persecution from their neighbors, from Palestinians, from many who do Their family. So if they're living in the United States and they still have family yeah. that lives in these these areas, you know, they have uh, problems, that's, that's what right. you're saying. Mm -hmm. So the root of anti-Semitism, uh, the earliest record of anti-Semitism and the root of anti-Semitism, uh, and what are the consequences of anti-Semitism? Let's talk about a few that we'd like to hit upon. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the earliest record of uh, recorded anti-Semitism is when Pharaoh decreed that the Jews should be um, murdered, any children, any male children that were born should be killed, and, and those that are, are or women would be allowed to live. And, uh, and so that was the first issue of genocide against the Jewish people because Pharaoh feared Israel of being a, a third column that would rise up, or fifth column that would rise up against him. And so he initiated the destruction of the Jewish people, and that of course led to the plagues that came upon uh, Egypt and, and uh, the setting apart of Moses, who was one of those children uh, set apart for destruction and wound up being the deliverer of the Jewish people. What is the consequences of anti-Semitism? Well, it affects all those that are, that are involved. Uh, you know, when you fight against uh, those whom God has chosen, you wind up fighting against God. Uh, e Egypt experienced the consequences of that with the, the almost the total destruction of its nation. Um, any, any people that have come against whom God has chosen wind up fighting God themselves. The Nazis, Spain, uh, you name it, throughout history, England at times, when, uh, whenever uh, people have risen against God's chosen people, they find themselves at odds with God. Now, how do we know that, that the Jewish people were chosen? You, you, I know I hear you say the chosen people, and I've always heard that Jewish people were the chosen people. How do we know they were chosen? From the scriptures and throughout history, we see that God's hand is upon them. They're, they're, though the, they're such a small minority, they have an incredible influence on the world. They were designed to be a light and a blessing to the nations. And uh, when they have become persecuted, they've wound up being the source of the nations being judged by God. Uh, God has disciplined the Jewish people because they were to be holy and a people set apart for him. And when we were not his holy people, God disciplined us. But whoever touched us, uh, even though at times God removed the shields around us, God himself judged those nations. For example, God raised up Babylon to judge us for our sin. But when Babylon went and oppressed us and, and, and uh, murdered us, God retaliated against ba Babylon by ra raising up the mm. Medes and the Persians and so on. And throughout history, you have that pattern. Yeah, what is, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is there a pattern in anti-Semitism today following a pattern of previous actions? Yeah, from time immemorial, there have been these uh, periodic seasons when enemies of Israel were allowed to attack Israel for our idolatry or for our sin. But when those times occurred, when, when, uh, when the Lord allowed that, then God turned around and disciplined those nations. Now, one might ask, well, why would God do that if he raised them up to discipline them? Well, I mean, that's his sovereign. They didn't do it because they were serving God. They did it because they hated the Jews. And, but God allowed that to happen. But when they did it, God disciplined them because they are his holy people. And he said throughout history, I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. And whether they are doing it wittingly or unwittingly for God, there are still consequences for, for those who attack Israel. Now, Christianity um, used to be accused of anti-Semitism. Is there, are they, st and I think the, one of the popes came out several years ago that, you know, they, they talked about that they felt that the Jews were the ones that murdered Christ. And um, I guess, you know, the Ro we, we find out later on it was the Romans, but then again, we, you know, there were some, you know, people that did rise up against him, you know, that possibly was Jewish, and they, one of them was Judas, I, I believe. And um, is, 
is Christianity, do you think that there's less anti-Semitism today with Christian people because they themselves are getting persecuted as well? Well, they are, but they don't line up the fact that uh, that hatred toward Jews or, or discrimination against Jews is actually an attack against the God that they worship. Um, and so um, early Christianity saw the Jewish people as a threat to their religion, as a threat to who they were, and so they blamed them for the death of Jesus. They, they accused them of deicide, of killing our God, our, our, our King and our Redeemer. Uh, but in reality, Jesus died for both Jews and Gentiles. When, when asked the question of who killed Jesus, Jesus, the response really is he died for our sin. And, and unless we acknowledge that we had a, all had a part in his death, that uh, under the sacrificial system, Jews had to lay their hands on an animal and then they had to kill the animal. They had to acknowledge that the animal was dying for their sin. Well, in much the same way, if, if a Christian is going to come to faith, he has to acknowledge that, that they were responsible because of their sin for the death of Jesus, that it was sin that put him to death. And yes, God used the hands of, of Gentiles, and yes, God used the hands of both Jews and Gentiles to, to bring about the death of Messiah, but he rose from the dead demonstrating that he was the atonement that God had provided. And all of us need to acknowledge that, that he died for our own sin. Now you grew up um, in an, uh, a, a traditional home. There was, I think your dad went to the Orthodox synagogue. I was Bar Mitzvah Orthodox. You were Bar Mitzvah Orthodox, right. And how did, how did you, um, you know, ha become a Messianic Jewish person or, and you, you, you rather than just go with the Orthodox or go with the Judaism. What turned you toward uh, Messianic Judaism? And you said that you saw it in the Old Testament as well. The old, you, know, it, you know, people think that Jesus just came out of the New Testament, where, where you, we, you said that, no, Jesus also came out from the Old Testament. And how did you see this? I mean, how did you... Well, my, mother, my mother grew up in Germany, my father in New York City, and both experienced uh, hostility. My mother had to flee Germany because of the Nazis. And, um, and so I was raised with the idea that Christianity was the source of persecution of the Jewish people, that it was the main source of it. And uh, then I met some people who were really into Jesus, and they started telling me about Jesus. And uh, I argued with them because mm -hmm. of all the, the history of Christianity. And, uh, but I never really considered the person of Jesus. And with every argument, they'd, they'd show me in the Bible where this was so and this was so. And finally, I said, you know, I'm Jewish. And I figured that would end the discussion. And they said, well, you ask the God of Israel if, if Jesus isn't uh, the Messiah of the Jewish people. Well, I sort of muttered something under my breath, thinking nothing would happen. But then things started happening. And I realized that, um, well, I saw the movie Godspell and Jesus Christ Superstar. And uh, here was a nonviolent revolutionary, a man of peace and love, and, and on top of everything else, he was Jewish. I mean, I always thought he was Catholic. And, and with that perspective that, that he was Jewish, I, you know, I just had prejudged Jesus based on, 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 on religion rather than the person. And as I examined the person, I saw that the prophets spoke of him, uh, you know, that, that, that myriads of Jewish scriptures talked about how he would recognize the Messiah. And, and certainly the life that he led from the prophecy of Isaiah 53, Isaiah chapter 9, from Zechariah and so on, fit him to a T, Daniel and so on. And so with those scriptures, I, I came to realize that Jesus was the Messiah of Israel. Now, not many Jewish people had accepted that, but I, I came to believe that he was. I felt like I was the only Jew who had done that. And then I came to realize that there were scores, hundreds of Jewish people who had also come to believe that Jesus was our Messiah, and we simply rejected him. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah, it, it's tough. You can't even mention, you know, I remember um, I was on an airplane going to Israel, in fact, and on one side was uh, a North Ex Jewish woman, and the other side was a Christian woman. And the Christian woman was looking, you know, she was reading her Bible, and she says, oh, I said, I never, re I never read the New Testament. She says, oh, here, take it. 
take it and read it. And the Orthodox woman on the other side, she said, oh my God, she can't read it. She took it out of my hands. I, I didn't even know who this person was. I mean, I'm sitting in the middle of two people, a Jewish Christian on one side. The Jewish woman took the, <laughs> out of my, the book out of my hand and gave it back to the other lady. She said, she can't read the New Testament. I said, why not? I, I, I want to learn something. You know, I don't know anything about the New Testament. And I, she didn't even want me to, to touch it. Right. And I, I couldn't believe it because it's a, it's a, it's, it's a book. And, there, you know, and I wanted to read it. It's a forbidden book to do it. It is. And why is it forbidden? Because it talks about Jesus as the Messiah and, and, uh, and the God of the Gentiles. The fact that uh, the Gentiles received him and we Jews rejected him. So he's forbidden to us. He's forbidden to us as something uh, accursed of God. And uh, among the religious, they, they see him as, as uh, a cursed, the cursed one. So you see anti-Semitism that's happening now. Uh, exactly what happened in the Bible years ago. It's, it's playing itself out again. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what, what made it come out again? You know, is it uh, the... The regathering of the Jewish people to the state of Israel has, has exacerbated and, and increased it. And, uh, and the fact that, that God has elected the Jewish people, chosen them. And, and the world despises that and has gifted them. I mean, you look at the, the history of the Jewish people, wherever they've gone, they've prospered. We're in the midst of, of the people they've lived among, and there's jealousy. Uh, the, initially, they were the only ones allowed to, uh, to loan money because Christians couldn't loan money to other Christians because it was usury. And so the Jews were consigned that. that they were money lenders. Yeah. And, 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 and they profited yeah. from it. They made a huge profit from it. And then the debts piled up and the Christians decided they were going to get rid of the debt by getting rid of the Jews. Uh, so, you know, they were vilified continually. Vilified. And in Shakespeare, in the, those books that Shakespeare wrote, you know, of, of uh, you know, uh, and they talk about the money lenders and they, you know, the Jews that they describe with the large nose and the big ears and they make them sound and, and people, even people thought because they saw a picture, um, the a statue of, um, who was it, with the horns or something? Moses. Mo uh, Moses. A painting. A painting or a statue. Yeah, well, it, it could have the, been a statue. It was the glory of God coming yeah. out of Moses. Then they thought Jewish horns. people had horns? Right. How could they, how could they even think that? You know, they see a picture, you see people with, you know, they, in paintings, people put, they put tails on them, people mm -hmm. do all kinds of things. And they actually thought that Jewish people had horns? Isn't that weird? It is. I can't believe that. I mean, in this day and age, I mean, people said they didn't, they were shocked when people, they saw Jewish people without horns. I, I never thought about that. But do you think it's a lot of um, um, people that are from uh, Muslim faith or, or, or that, that go to many of these universities are the people that are starting up again? You know, the, they're the ones more or less responsible. We're talking about BDS movement, uh, rather than it's not the Christians that are doing that in colleges. No. Or it's, so they're again, it's to disenfranchise Israel. It is to, to cause the other nations to rise up against Israel and and to consider them a pariah, a pariah state, uh, to to attack them for their independence and to get the nations to come against them. What is the Christian community doing to help the Jewish people and help people that are well, like uh, that are having problems, especially a lot of the college students because it's coming out in many of these colleges. Um, they're trying to, you know, I think there was a new law, I think that they just put in, uh, you know, against uh, anti-Semitism in, in the universities. I think something just came out uh, in the administration about it. But um, what are they doing to help the Christian community, helping the Jewish community out? Well, there are many Christian organizations that are for Israel, that, are, that see Israel as, as uh, chosen of God and called of God and, and loved of God. And so they are speaking up in their churches. They are uh, educating Christians. Uh, about the history of the Jewish people and, and the theological reasons why we need to uh, support Israel. 
And so there are many Christian organizations that are committed to praying for and doing all they can politically for the state of Israel. There are Christian organizations that have been formed to lobby for Israel and to support Israel. And so there are many Christians that are committed to the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. They see it as a, a chosen of God and called of God and, and, uh, and blessed of God and, and, and do not want to be in, on the side against what God is doing in these days. And what are people doing for the Christian community too? Because they are also uh, getting, that we just recently heard, gunned down in their, in their churches. As, you know, set aside the synagogue, but you know, why all of a sudden in religion itself there's an uprising against even Christians right now well, Christians, in different countries? Christians are partakers now of the God of Israel. They have been made one with the Jewish people in whom God loves, the God of this world again despises. And so as, as people are coming to faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, Jesus, also, the enemies of Israel are are taking aim at the enemies of God, uh, enemies, of their enemies, because they've joined with the God of Israel. I so see. they become targets as well. You know, as we're talking, I'm thinking about your book. Why did you write the book, and why where Jesus walked, the places, the people, and the prophecies in the life of Christ. You're, this why is a beautiful yes, a beautiful so book. That, so that Christians would understand that Christianity is Jewish. Uh, there are very few uh, books that uh, chronicle the life of Jesus from a Jewish perspective. And so in it I talk about the Old Testament prophecies, how it was foretold, how it was fulfilled in the New Covenant, uh, also locating it in the land so that they could see the context of the statements and the history behind it and how it relates to the Old Testament. So I put together Old and New Covenants uh, talking about about the person, the work, and the ministry of Jesus, that he's the Messiah of Israel, and that he's the Jewish Messiah, and that Christians, when they come to faith in, the, in, in Jesus, they've come to faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. And so I, I wrote it for Christians, but I also wrote it for Jews, so that they would understand that, that uh, Jesus is Jewish, and that the New Covenant is Jewish, and, and that uh, in, through him, both Jews and Gentiles are made one. Mm -hmm. And again, that's one of the reasons why they become a target with us by the enemies of God. Because most people that are Jewish, they, they don't think that they haven't, they said that Messiah hasn't come yet, right? right. They're still waiting for the Messiah to, to come. And um, I think that's the differentiation between the two. You believe that the Messiah has come. And he's returning. And he's returning.